St. David's School is a inner city school. It's located in the Donovan area of Sudbury. In general, and this is a big generalization, our children come from families that potentially have had struggles in their life, no question. So that being said, our children are as bright and beautiful as any other children in any other school. We really believe in instilling a sense of identity and pride in who you are. So our hope is that, number one, you will love school. When you leave the building, you will go on to great things. And that doesn't necessarily mean educationally. It doesn't mean that you're gonna to go to university, but it means that you're gonna be a good person. It means that you're gonna treat people respectfully. It means that you're gonna be a good parent to the next generation. Potentially, you could go to university. Doctors, lawyers, that's what we wanna see. But it doesn't mean that everyone's gonna fit into that mold. Our building is filled with amazing children of all different backgrounds, but we do have a high population of First Nation, Métis, and Inuit student. Primarily, we have First Nation students in our building. So we do have a true responsibility to be responsive to their needs and to complement the math and literacy curriculum with the cultural supports and a better understanding of our students and their families. What happens here doesn't happen anywhere else. The care and the focus into recognizing the value of Indigenous teachings here. This is what gives our, our young people hope, their identity. It's very important that our young people have their identity and that they can appreciate their identity. All that previous curriculums have embedded into young people that there's no hope. It's important for them to see their path to the future, but the only way they'll see that is to see the footsteps that have come behind them. It's very, very important. Everyone, Indigenous, non-Indigenous students, teachers within this building, are committed to that holistic view of that lifelong learning, that, you know, we have them here for, for a short bit of time, but while they are here, they will be taken care of in mind, body, and spirit and everything that happens in the school, whether it be academic, whether it be the extracurricular activities, it is 100% dedicated to that mindset. So that's a really important piece, I think, is the importance of, of that holistic approach, the importance of identity and culture that everyone sees themselves within this learning environment. So those are some really precious things for myself as an Indigenous person, I came through the same school board as a child, from JK all the way up. And when I went to my elementary school, I didn't see these posters up on the wall. I didn't see um, Anishinaabe people in the system. So I was, I was lost for a long time. And I didn't see it until I went to Laurentian University. And that's when I started learning about my people and understanding myself. So for them to see it at a young age, you walk with your head a bit higher. You walk around and you nod at people and you, you know that I am, I am celebrated. I am even acknowledged. I am even uh, included. Because we know what it feels like not to be acknowledged not to be included and when you have it in your home when you walk around it changes you you know you can be yourself you can ah, yes I am I'm here Back when they were developing the school, it was recognizing the importance of letting architects who have been conditioned to build boxes know that this is not a building. This is a space for human beings to be human. And, and it needs to be understood that it's not your typical building. 
and because of where it's located that's what was exciting so many people but myself personally was knowing that my children would be in a building this close to nature because most of the summer we would be spending that time outside and then to have them come to a school that had no access to the outside would be stifling of them being humans and that's that message that indigenous knowledge is actually human knowledge and if we look to all cultures and all spiritualities and traditions is that we will see those human teachings and education is one of those places where more of those human teachings need to be infused and more of the spaces need to be more conducive to that human way of learning and engaging. Our school is a brand new school to the neighborhood. We used to be farther down the street and it was all surrounded in concrete. When we first moved here, when people would come and ask the kids, what's the difference about the school? All they would talk about is the grass and the trees. They didn't care about the inside of the school. They didn't care about the new gym. It was evident that they hadn't been surrounded by nature before. They were really proud of that. They're proud of our brook. They're proud of how much time we spend on the trails. They're proud of the outdoor classroom. And just to spend time in those spaces is important to them, so it makes it important to us. We're privileged in that the leadership in our building really enables us to do that work. But it's like I wouldn't even have started thinking about this if it wasn't for our principal and vice principal and other people in our building. I'm terrified of snakes. I don't like bugs. Like, I'm not like particularly an outside lover. But it was like, kindergarten is doing these great things and they're going outside and the kids love to be there. And our vice principal and one of our ECEs is going to this really cool workshop. Do you want to come? And then the next thing I know, I'm like, sure, I'll take my kids outside every Wednesday all year long. This is great. did lots of animal tracking this year which is funny because that's I didn't come out with a plan that like we were going to really focus on one thing or the next but my kids just they love tracking they love identifying plants and medicines they love building shelters so it's a completely different way of thinking so instead of me going out there necessarily and thinking okay we're gonna cover our curriculum expectation 3.2 that's not necessarily what happens so it's like they do what they kind of want to do and I and I guide them in that right like sometimes I, I have a bigger idea of what sort of where we're going but it's it's sort of doing it backwards then I go and look and and see what it connects to and then try to fill in the gaps when we look at curriculum we are pushing for that inquiry based approach where there's that shared leadership for learning and so the, there are some challenges around that because as a teacher, often we, we do have that type A personality of wanting to make sure that we're controlling that environment in a very prescribed way because that's the way our curriculum is set up. As a teacher, you have a role and your role is to ensure that you're providing opportunity for students to lead the learning. Then the learning becomes that, uh, it becomes a collective knowledge. And taking that approach, that, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about Indigenous education. When you walk through these doors, you're going to hear laughter. And you're going to hear laughter from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. because it's the culture that everyone has helped cultivate in the school. There's a lot of things that are sad working here, but those kids are the best. They're the best kids in the world. They're so funny and resilient and they just wanna learn. And to have kids that are so grateful and, and love school, like that's our goal here. I care about curriculum, but my number one goal is for you to feel safe, for you to feel loved, and for you to love school. Like that's my biggest goal over everything. And I think that's why the people that work here do such a good job because we put kids first. And I think the joy of working in this building is that for sure. 
When we talk about protocols and bringing in elders and, and the Indigenous knowledge, it's a co-guided learning. So there's, a, there's an openness that is present within this building. When we consider what that looks like when an elder comes into the classroom, the teacher is sort of that guide on the side. Indigenous education really is about a collective. It is not one person that is necessarily an expert. Any elder or knowledge keeper will tell you that. I always get asked about the Catholic board and um, I've gotten a lot of flack from our community about working in the Catholic board. Like, what am I doing here? And the main reason is First Nations spirituality. Uh, like when you talk about the medicine wheel, you can't talk about the medicine wheel without focus, a focus on spirituality. Because again, everything, our language, everything that we did connected to spirit and the earth. You know, and everything was about the children. So like, it's really hard to teach about our culture when you're not talking about that spiritual part. And then of course we got kids in this building. You know, if someone wants to come up and say, what are you doing working for that Catholic school board? Look man, we got, we got a lot of kids in this building that are First Nations. And those kids need support. And they don't get the teachings and I bring it in. And, and again, I can freely and openly talk about anything I want. That spiritual part is such a big deal, man. F you know, for me, for, for students, for, you know, for, our, for our people, so um, there's more freedom for me to do that, which, which I like. I've had the opportunity to have a number of teachers who were too scared to identify. But because of the teachings with, in, in the classroom, doing the teachings with the children, they came out and they identified after me. And um, that was very powerful, you know, when that started to happen because all their lives they were probably told never to say those things, and never to admit that. And to come out after having the teachings and realize that, hey, I should be proud of who I am, you know. This is a home, not just for our students, but it's a home for the parents and all those community partners that want to come in here and help us educate these children, right? Like, takes a village to educate our children in a good way. And that saying is lost these days because that's what this place is. It's the village raising our kids, not just a teacher in a classroom. It's the EAs, it's the ISWs, it's the elders, it's the you know, Better Beginnings, the after school program. We're all this, this community that teaches and educates and raises our children here. And that's what makes this such a great place to work. It's not just a closed door closed door place like a lot of schools are, right? Now is the time. You know, for hundreds of years, we had to keep it secret and keep it safe. But when that white buffalo returned to Turtle Island in 97, that was the time that that door kind of closed and the next fire was lit. Now is the time that we're supposed to be sharing these teachings with the rest of humanity. It doesn't matter what color you are. This Anishinaabek teachings that, that we learn and that I teach, those are hum, human being teachings. They're not for just one part of the medicine wheel. They're for all races of mankind. And we've gotten so far away from that beautiful, holistic, circular thinking that that medicine wheel teaches us. That's what we need right now. Like society needs to get out of their hierarchical, short-term, narrow-minded thinking and get back to that seven generational circular way of thinking. For many years in Canada, quality education was judged in a Western philosophy. So it was your math, your literacy, but it was not in nature, it was not in the world we live in, it was in textbooks, it was theories, it was formulas. And I think today we're at a different place where we are, as a country, recognizing that Indigenous knowledge is of equal value. I left school learning that I contributed nothing at all to Canada. You know, I, I left school learning through those books that, my goodness, it was a good thing somebody came and discovered us, you know? So I leave school walking around with my head down, feeling not very good about myself, you know? And, and St. David's School has one school that shares the culture, it shares the gifts, it shares the contributions that our Indigenous community has put forward, that we do have a presence in Canada on this land.